worship him this morning. everybody here this morning. Miss the little ones is on their way back today, I guess. Uh, it's good to see all of you here. It's good to have a little rain out there today. And uh, Miss Brother Collie not being here this morning. I know how the back problem works. I guess all of you in here this got a little, got a day or two on you have had back problems. And all you got to do is shuck it off and keep on walking because he can't stay there. It's not his property. The Lord's already claimed it. Uh, as we go to the Word this morning, let's just go to the author and thank him for this day. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. You've given us to come and gather around your Word and give us this place, Lord. And Actually, Lord, you've made it so comfortable and the place is nice to be here. And I can see, Lord, by all the Word that you've just come to me, I feel like sometimes a spoiled brat. And Lord, I, the chastisement, Lord, I know I brought on myself a lot of times and sometimes you just tested me just to be sure that I knew what I was and who I'm, what I'm doing. Because we know you've already sent your word to heal us and deliver us from our own destruction. And Lord God, we bless this day that we can come and gather around your word freely and openly here today. Have your way with us and just bless those that couldn't make it through the door today. And bless all of those that are traveling back here today. Just be with them and bless them and bless their fellowship with each other and just grant them mercy as they're traveling down the road. And I ask today that you'd bless Brother Wade and lift him up and strengthen him, Lord God. And, Father, I'd ask that you'd just give us all more wisdom and speak to our starving souls, Lord, and just help us as you have, Lord, and have your way with us. And I would say this, Lord, come quickly, because this world is not my home. I ask these things in your precious name, and, Lord, again, bless all our children. Fill these seats. Bring them back, Father. Speak to their hearts, whatever it takes. Kicking, crying, everything, just bring them on in, Lord. Have your way with them. We ask it in your name as we go to your word. We love you, Father. Amen. We're going to read this morning from uh, Psalms 119. I'll turn turned up right here. Uh, we're not going to read all of them. Just, they're all good, every one of them. I was sitting there this morning reading this one, reading that one, and going back over them. And, uh, same author, in other words. We're going to read from uh, 49 through 64. He's already got it up there. As we read, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. The proud have had me greatly in certain derision, yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments, O Lord, and have not forgiven myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night. And have kept thy law. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. I thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways, 
and turn my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Come this morning to gather together unto him for us to hear the statutes of the Lord. Write them in the tables of our heart. Hallelujah. Brother Bob, would you come this morning and uh, lift up the tithes and offering? Lord God, thank you for your grace and for your mercy to us. We just ask you to bless upon these tithes and offerings as many things as you've done to bless us, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would receive this Lord this little bit we get back to you Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that um, song I feel like traveling on. My heavenly Traveling. 
Father, I appreciate you. stand as we sing it once more. Oh, Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Oh, just tell him how much you love him. Oh, Heavenly Father, I appreciate you. Oh, yes, I love testify to that this morning. Oh, God's mercy rewrote my life. For I should have fallen my soul cast down. But mercy Sing it to him as a testimony. Oh, God's mercy. Fallen, my soul cast down. 
Amen. Mercy. I should have fallen. We all should have went to hell. But God had a plan. He had sons and daughters of God that he was going to bring on this earth by the way of the fall. And he was going to turn this thing around right in the middle of Satan's Eden. And that's what we believe is going on now. Amen. Satan got into God's Eden. Well, now God just turned right around and got into Satan's Eden. Amen. So that's all it is now. To, <clears throat> everything's going on in the world. Did you see where the 150-something people got killed, trampled to death in China or wherever it was over there, South Korea? Just because somebody must have screamed boo or shot a firecracker or something, they were having a Halloween concert or something, and they were so packed in until 150 people were trampled to death just in one street, one area, 150 people. And all of them, 90% of them were below the age of 20. So what a bunch of lives that got cut off just because of a Halloween, somebody trying, trying to celebrate Halloween. But that's man. <clears throat> that, and you know what? That wasn't God. That was the devil. The devil prided himself in doing that. But you know what he prides himself more is getting into me and you. Amen. Bothering me and you is his pride and joy is to make us what? To make us worry. And all these things that we're getting ready to talk about, <clears throat> we're still on who is this son of man. But remember, we're still talking about it's all in your head. Amen. <clears throat> this is not so. We're not going to remember the bad things, right? So the bad things we go through, we're just not even going to remember them. You know what? God don't remember them, so we aren't going to remember them. He's going to wipe all that away, and we're, we're, going, to have, we're going to know the good things. <clears throat> we're going to know the good times that we had, but we're not going to know the bad times. You say, how did God do that? It doesn't matter. He's God. He can do it, and I'm glad he's doing it. Amen. <clears throat> Let's remember the ones that are coming back from the youth camp. If you've been watching the services, they've been really good. <clears throat> And uh, the kids are getting something out of it, but they're up there now, and they're going to be home a little bit later. And we have um, um, we got a few that's coming here. we got a few that's going to my house, so we'll get all that figured out. If you don't have any kids, don't worry about it. But if you do, you need to worry about your kids. But those that are not here, usually Brother Luis is gone, Brother Aaron's gone, Brother Boyd's gone. They're up there with the young adults, and they are helping them with the uh, services. So they'll be coming home 3, 30, 4 o'clock, leaving like. Uh, today so remember brother Luis will be preaching for us on wednesday night <clears throat> it's november november the 5th we'll have no bible study that's saturday night all right also remember time changes that night we do what we fall back spring forward in the spring fall back in the winter all right so we're going to fall back You'll get one extra hour sleep. You ought to be able to awake and wonderful that morning. And yeah, right. <clears throat> November the 6th, that will be that Sunday. We're going to have one service. All right. After that one service, we're going to all go that are going to the wedding. Zach and Lily, finally, we've come to the day that we're going to have a uh, have a wedding. So uh, Brother Zach and Sister Lily are going to be joined together at 4 o'clock. And then we will, uh, like I said, don't get there any earlier than that. Church service starts at 4. All right. And those of you that are going, get your, know where you're going and get your addresses and all that. All right. There'll be no, excuse me, there'll be no second service. All right. So Brother Bob will be preaching for the, the next Wednesday. Uh, the next week, uh, June and I will be in Illinois the whole week hunting. So Brother Bob will have it on Wednesday night. Also, remember, November the 13th, only one service. We'll have a dinner that day. All right, November the 20th, Brother Andrew Glover will be here with us that weekend. I'll be at Brother Richard Hyatt's. <clears throat> I'll be hunting and then coming back to his church, Lord willing. November the 22nd, remember that week of Thanksgiving church will be on Tuesday night, not Wednesday. Tuesday night, November 22nd, the, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. All right, everybody got that? Say amen. All right. <clears throat> and just to look ahead, December the 4th, because December will be here when, before you know it. First Sunday in December, December the 4th, we'll be having our Christmas dinner party slash down at the uh, at the barn or at Hidden Acres. We'll only have one service here. We'll have our Christmas party down there. December 25th, there'll be no service. That's on Sunday. That'll be Christmas Day. So we won't have service that day. 
But remember, I want you to be praying for this. We're December the 10th, bless you. Again, December, thank you. Uh, December the 10th, <laughs> you have to wait a little while. If Regina starts doing that, she's like a, she's like a rapid fire she, for about 10 minutes. But December the 30th and 31st, we've always had a watch night service on the 31st, right? We've had one. I don't think we've ever not had one. <clears throat> but being that that's on Saturday night and we won't have church that Sunday either, January the 1st, I hope it's not true. You know, they say what you do in the first day of the, of the year, that's what you do the rest of the year. I hope we don't take that literally because there won't be church service on January the 1st because we'll be here to midnight on Saturday. But we're going to have a Friday night service. Starting at 7 o'clock, Brother Wayne Lawson will be with us Friday night, December the 30th at 7 o'clock. And then Saturday, December the 31st at 8 o'clock, just like a normal, regular watch night service. All right? <clears throat> so we'll be posting this on the board and on the website. So just keep these things in mind. It's a busy time of the year, but we got to make time for God. We're going to have communion today after the second service, communion and foot washing. So let's just be in prayer for that. So let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, thank you for this time you've given us, Lord, to stand and speak to your people. Lord, we know that we're all insufficient, as we were saying. We needed mercy. We need grace. We need all these things, but you gave it to us. So once you gave it to us and we enter into it, Lord, then then you said, be ye therefore perfect. And you gave us apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists to preach the perfect word to us that will make us perfect, Lord. Not so much, not in our flesh. That comes at the change of the body. But, Lord, to get this inner man started right, get him on his journey right, and, Lord, we live for you. Father, just forgive us of our sins and mistakes. Be with the ones that are at the um, youth service, Lord. Bless Brother Jason Watkins, Brother Matthew, and all the different ones, the ministers that are up there, Brother Josh Bennett, and, and <coughs> excuse me, Brother Andrew Glover, the different ones that are ministering, Lord. We pray that you'd just be with them, Father. Give them supernatural strength. I know they're going to be tired after three or four days of doing this. I pray that you'll give them strength, Lord, for Monday. Father, just give us this day our daily bread. And bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Who is this son of man? Part 67. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. That's what? It's got to happen that in the end time. That is the son of man. Brother, Brother Brown, what is, who is the son of man? He said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. <clears throat> and we beheld his glory. Now, that's what I want you. We're going to talk about that little piece of it. Be hell, how are you going to behold his glory if he's not here? How are you going to do that? Through you. Through you. You're his glory. You're his victory. You're what he's going to produce to the earth through me and you. Because he's not here in physical form. He's not here. He's only here in spirit form, the son of God. But the son of man ministry is going to have to come back in the last day to change our bodies. Because that's what he done with the son of man. It changed his body. Is that right? So that's what we're heading toward. But we got to come to step by step. We can't go to the first grade and 12th grade. We got to go one, two, three, four, five, all the way up. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. You know, if you're born again today, you're the only begotten of the father. You're not begotten. You, you say, well, I'm the third child of my mom and daddy. You might be. But if you're born again, you're the first child of God. Right. Amen. You've got to start thinking yourself that way. There is no, there is no uh, family, and then you've got this one born first. And No, we're all born again believers. The son of God revelation that we're going to look at here in just a second. Look, full of grace and truth. How are we going to be full of grace and truth? By the word of God. Amen. First Thessalonians said that every one of you <clears throat> should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. You say, well, I need some help. Well, God's going to help you, but you're going to have to make an effort. You're going to be possessed of one or the other. We'll talk about that a little bit in the, in the sermon. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not your neighbors, not your wife's, your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And you may be seated. See, that says you may prove. <clears throat> we know God's going to prove through us. But we've got to be a yielded vessel for that to happen. Is everybody with me? Amen. For that to happen, you've got to be a yielded vessel to yield yourself to God. And that God can what? Work through you, with you, 
Brother Brown said, you and God in there as persons. Amen? You don't lose your personality when you get born again. You receive the personality of God. And that what vulcanizes with your soul, as we're going to talk about the heart in just a minute, because you've got to start with the heart. Then you come to the five outer senses, and then you got the five outer, outer, outer senses that you are well, that you are, well, you're sitting here today with it. Memory, reason, conscious. You're hearing what I'm saying. You're seeing, all right, <clears throat> see, taste, feel, smell, and hear. Then you've got memory, reason, conscious, facts, and imagination. Then you've got what? Faith or doubt. And that's the only senses that you have to work with. Well, thank God for a prophet that he could separate them, yet make sure that they stay together. Because you if you pull them apart, you're dead. All right? The soul without the spirit, the Bible says, the flesh without the spirit is dead. It's all dead. So now you're what? A triune being that God has put on this earth. Let it be by permissive will or sexual act as permitted by God to get you here for you to make a choice. So it's all, everything we talk about today is by choice, by your free moral agency. Even though you may be born again, if you don't have free moral agency, then God is going to just pull you a tube. He's going to pull you up to the statue of perfect man. No, Brother Brown, so you've got to fight for every inch of, you, of what you're looking for, right? All right, we'll call it just a minute. I've got to hurry through this. All right, you remember, the <coughs> first thing you've got to do is be born again. Now, what is that? You've got to be changed. So the soul has got to be changed, not exchanged. Taken out and another one put in. No, that'd be really easy and that wouldn't be you. Because you were born a unit, a body, a spirit, and a soul. That's you. Brother Brown, that's why he said, I don't believe in transmigration. I don't believe in reincarnation. In other words, I don't believe in preexistence of souls. All right, so let's get away from that. Oh, brother, I, thought I saw you before the foundation of the world. No, in the Word of God, maybe you did. But you didn't see my person. My person didn't come into being until we came on this earth. Amen? So let's just take away all that other stuff. And my soul didn't migrate over to somebody else's. Nobody would want it. And the congregation said, amen. You didn't have to say it that much. And he gave some. How are we going to do this? We know this, but we've got to, we've got to see he gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers for what? The perfecting of the saints. So you can get it, but you can't grow without it. You can get the new birth. But you can't grow without having these five folds of the ministry of God in your life. That's why we try to bring evangelists in, or different ones, and and uh, <clears throat> and seeking for some that come a little bit later. For the what? For the perfecting of the saints. What? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. And of what? Of the knowledge. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. We know that there's a knowledge up here. And we know that there's a worldly knowledge. That's why we've got to have a, a mind. Not a mind. Take my mind out and put the mind of God in. Paul says we've got to have the mind of Christ. Which works through your mind. Because you're still a human being over here. All right? We still have human thoughts. We still have human ideas. But we've got to bring it, what, into the center, center realm, and then work its way out. All right? Because the very fountain of you today is your soul. The very fountain of you is your heart. Whatever. We're going to read it in just a minute or maybe this afternoon. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. What is the abundance of the heart? Not this thing right here. This is flesh. But it's your soul. It's your psyche. It's you. And then that you works its way out to memory, reason, conscious, faith, and imagination. And then works itself out. And all this does, it does what it's told to, told to do. I'm doing this because somewhere in my brain is telling me to do this because I want to because I've thought about it. Everybody with me? You say, what's this got to do with the statue of perfect man? It, we got to have a mind. We got to have a mind change. It's got to change our thoughts. Amen. It's got, it's got to change, but it's got to start from the heart. All right, let's read this right here. So the knowledge of what the Son of God unto a perfect man. Look, that we henceforth be no more children. And that's fine. You know, it's, you can't take it out of the Bible laying hands on the sick, but there is a time where it comes to where you're going to have to speak the word. Amen. There is got a time to where you've got to speak the word. Not somebody else. You've got to speak the word. Not waiting on the preacher to speak the word. Not waiting on the prophet of God to come back. He's already spoke the word. 
but you and I to speak the word. To have enough faith inside of ourselves to what? Have power with character that we're going to talk about in a minute. Power with character fit to what? Rule over what? You first. Rule over me first. I got to get me under control. I got to get me under control. So that starts, though, by the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the Son of God, the revelation of the Son of God, where Jesus kept kept talking, kept talking. He was the Son of God, but he was also what? The Son of Man. The Son of God was speaking through that Son of Man. Everybody with me? All right. And he never he never made now he made human mistakes, but he never made a mistake in the word. He never misquoted the Old Testament. He never said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that." No, what he said, he said, "My words are spirit and their life," and he didn't back off from it one bit. Why? Because he was all of it, total. The Son of Man. You and I, when we get up to that capstone. That's why the seals, when the seals broke, that broke so that we could have an ability to think just like Jesus thought. To talk just like Jesus taught. Now, sorry to say that in the Son of God revelation, you can have some false teaching. Everybody with me? You can have some false teaching. You said, prove it. Martin Luther, he was a son of God. He taught a Trinitarian doctrine. That didn't come from his soul. Somehow in his memories and conscious effects and imagination, Satan put a dart in there. So a son of God can be deceived. Brother Branham preached the mighty conqueror in 1957, 58, 59, preached it from Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. But when he got to the first seal, he said, I would have made a horrible mistake. Why? He was getting ready to move into that. The revelation of the Son of Man, where what he what come out of his mouth was what God was teaching the people. It was the mind of God. Think of what before then, man. Come on, people. Before then, there was confusion. <clears throat> There's still confusion now, but before then, there was so much confusion. Was it this? Was it that? Was it Trinity? Was it oneness? Was it twoness? Was it three? Was it water baptism this way or that way? Brother Branham, under the ministry of the Son of God, he brings that back to what? The faith of the fathers. All right? He brings that back to the faith of the fathers. And when he brings it back to the faith of the fathers, he then thinks he's finished. And then we've quoted it many times. Brother Dale's preached on it for years and years and years. About he's come to a place, he said, not in the years of preparation. Where's the years of preparation? Listen, this is the years of mine and your preparation. This is when you grow, what your years, listen, each and every one of you sitting here today has a purpose either in God or the devil. Well, praise the Lord. Who else? Well, I got a purpose, either God or the devil, one of the two. Excuse me for drinking so much, my throat's a little bit, a little bit sore. But the Son of God revelation is our growing time. Everybody with me? Because Jesus had to grow in grace and knowledge. The Bible says, and being made perfect. I'm reading the Bible. He became the what? The author. The author. He he wrote something down. He wrote a book. What did he write? Me and you. He wrote away from me and you to become that. But remember, that was rejected. The top part where it says, Son of Man. That justification, we're coming to. That sanctification, we're coming to. And that body change, we are coming to. But it started on the day of Pentecost, or it started on what? Your day of Pentecost by the new birth. You you had a day of Pentecost where a tongue of fire lit on top of your head and went down into your soul and burnt the devil out. Didn't kill your soul, it burned him out, drove him out. The unclean spirit goes out of a man. But you had it sealed in by God so there was no way Satan could get back in. But where did he go? He went to your second realm. Memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination. That's where he's working. That's what Brother Brown said the greatest battle ever fought was what? In your mind. What is your mind? Every thought, everything you do develops from your mind. Everything you do develops from your thoughts. Amen? That's what we're going to talk about if we get to it. 
Peter says, for as so is the will of God. This is, this is something I, I want us to see this so much because you know what? Jesus stood many, many times and the common people heard him gladly. The sinners heard him. The prostitutes, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all heard him. They all heard Jesus. It's a man. There's nobody ever spoke like this man. But where was his trouble? His trouble was with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. His trouble was with the religious world. He, I don't say he couldn't stand them, but every time he got around them, he started calling them names. Everybody with me? He, he, wasn't, he, didn't, he wasn't no soft soaping. He said, you snakes, you vipers, father of the devil. So what was he doing? He was telling the people, he said, look, I can't do this all by myself. Hello, somebody. I'm going to have 120 that's going to start here in just a little while. When I leave, there's going to be 120 me come back. You're going to have to deal with all them. And then you go bring Paul into court. You go bring Peter into court. You go bring James into court. John, and here we go. They can't. I hear I am one man, but they're all over the place now. So what did it do? It put to silence the ignorance of foolish man, men. For so is the will of God. So this is the will. What is the will of God? The word of God is that with well doing, you may put to silence, not that you're boastful. But God's going to put the, he's going to put the words in your mouth and it's going to make the people silent. <clears throat> the silence of what? Foolish men. If you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost today, you're not foolish. Can't be. Your soul's as eternal as God is. It's not eternal as God is. It is God. All right. <clears throat> Let's get on down here. Sid. Here's what it is. It's easy to feel the power of God. We're going to get to this a little bit later, and I'm going to read you a real shocking quote. To see it when you believe, but then when it comes to the showdown, are you able to possess the thing that you profess to have? Do we as Lula, Georgia, possess what we profess to have? That's my question to all of us. That's the thing, brother. We've got to get it. We've got to take it. It's ours, but you'll fight for every inch. It's a struggle. I told Bob, Luis and Aaron, <clears throat> I said, y'all won't be preaching much because you come from here. Did I not? You make one round and that's about it. Because when you start preaching and teaching the word of God to people, <clears throat> Pastors get jealous. But why? Why would I not as a pastor of a church or anybody, I'm saying them out there, me as a pastor of that church, would not want somebody to come in and if my people, if it if it brought your eyes this big and if it brought you said, hey, brother, could you tell us that? And, and say, hey, brother, wait, could you bring that guy back again? We need some of this. Oh, buddy, what ha- you know what happens is, don't you, old Mr. Selfish pops up. Yeah. Yo, you trying to steal my people? No, he's trying to preach the Word of God. Amen. I want us to make it. Amen. I just want us to make it. I don't care how we make it. Amen. Skin of our teeth? So what? We made it. Right. Listen, David, the great king that had everything in the world, he said, Lord, just let me be a doormat. Just let me be a doormat in the house of God as long as I'm in the house of God. Just let me be a doormat. And if you don't have that attitude, God will place you somewhere. All right? You place yourself somewhere, you're in trouble. We've all tried. Every Christian, every son, every child that comes to God is tried by what? You're not tried by the devil. That's not what that says. You're tried by the word. See if you'll be loyal to it. When the showdown comes, what decision are you going to make? That's it. 
And he that cannot stand chastisement but goes on with the world, he's an illegitimate child and not a son and daughter of God. That's why Jesus could look at those Pharisees, and he knew they hated him, they, and they're the ones that killed him. But he called them, you generation of vipers, you snakes. John said it. Jesus said it. I'm of my father. You're of another father. That's pretty close. And not a son and daughter of God, certainly not. Now, but the what? Spiritual-minded catches the word, not the natural-minded person. Listen, it's hard to come to church physically. Everybody with me? It's hard to come to church physically. you got to get up. Some of you have to drive an hour, hour and a half, two hours maybe sometimes to get to this building. Right? You got to get ready. You got to take the dog out. You got to take this out. You got to fix something for in between services. I understand that. But something inside of you ought to drive you to this church. It ought to drive you to get here. It ought to drive you what? To not just get here for the formality, but to fellowship with God in his people. Because we are sheep. We have to be what? We're herd animals. We have to be together. All right? And I know it's hard to come back at 2 o'clock. And I know we talk about being sleepy, but but sometimes you got to fight it. Fight the thing. Take a knife and put it right here. Oh, never mind. We do pray for the sick. We'll have a prayer line afterwards. So. Bring something to clean your blood up, though, because I know some of you going to do that. I know I ain't right. But it's human. It's, it's our humanity. But fight it. Fight it to get something from God, even if it's 15 minutes. Even if it's 15 minutes of what you listen to, 15 minutes is yours. And listen, God knows you're going to be tired. So maybe he'll keep you awake in your spot till you can get that awake part. And then maybe somebody else will get something while you're going to nod. But look. But the spiritual minded, minded, not the body minded, not the flesh minded, the what? The spiritual minded <coughs> catches the word of God, lines up with it, and what? The, then look, let me, let me paraphrase. The spirit is happy. The spirit is happy to come down under the shed blood and take that person. Be a prisoner. Be a prisoner of God. Paul, a prisoner of Christ. Each one of us. Look what happened to the children in the fiery furnace. They were a prisoner for a while. Do you know the image? Do you know what that image was that they refused to buy down to? That was their buddy Daniel. Belteshazzar. Oh, wouldn't that work in the message today? Preach anyway. But I mean, really, look what, that, look what, and that's what they're going to do to me and you. They're going to try to crucify us for not following a man. And you got to go to a certain spot to get it. Folks, they know you a certain spot you got to go to get the word of God. But what did it do? Those of us that are being persecuted, they are being tied. They can't get out and preach because of what? Because of the reputation of this place, of this church, or of this ministry, not the building, but the ministry. <clears throat> but what it should do, it should deliver you. You know what? It makes you stay home where you can teach the home people. Man. But the only thing it did, what? It delivered them from the bounds that they were bound with. It was a paradox. Sometimes in our own lives, that paradox repeat, repeats. Sometimes you're brought to a showdown where you have to make a decision. One more time, you are going to have to make a decision. There's a requirement to choose as a free moral agent. You've got to choose right and wrong, right from wrong. You have to stand on that decision like they did. And it all works together for the good. What did it do? It never hurt them. It loosed them. Amen? Sometimes we're caught in that position. First thing you got, remember the man drowning in the river. You got to get the man out of the river before you can get the river out of the man. Same thing with here. You got to get the devil out of the man. 
Come out and make your stand. Get the thing out. Because listen, folks, we do have those little foxes that still spoil the vine. We've got those little things that still come about us, and they're demons. They're not just they're not just little floating. No, they're demons. Brother Bram walked into a place, and he said he see them hanging in the rafters. What? Demons. Ready to what? Dispute him. You see what he was under. That's why God had to give him a commission and told him, said, I'll be with you. Remember, he said, the ever failing word of God, I'll be with you. Don't you worry about those demons up there. And and like I said before, somebody was saying about cancer. You know, there's a lot of people had a healing campaign, but there's nobody touched Brother Branham's healing campaign, especially when it comes to cancer. Because cancer was a hard demon. Because Brother Branham said, the angel said, he said, he made it specific. He said, nothing will stand in your way. Now, he could have just left it right there. He said, even cancer. Because at that time, folks, that was what, 50, 60 years ago, cancer was just a word that meant death. Cancer, death, that was it. Didn't matter if you had a little spot on your arm or something, uh, breast cancer or different things, you were gone. Because there was no technology. Now, thank God. Thank God that, uh, as somebody was saying the other day, you know, Brother Brown prayed to God to, for men to find a cure of cancer. He was wanting to find a cure of cancer, knowing that what? That cancer is going to go everywhere. All right? So now we've got doctors and we've got things that you say cancer now. Didn't Brother Brown say cancer would be like a toothache before the end time? Like a toothache. You say cancer now, you got a lot better t- chance of survival than you did 60 years ago. So God sent the great physician through Brother Branham to get rid of that cancer. Drive that cancer completely out of their body. Stuff fall off on the platform. <coughs> a lady that weighed what? What she weighed? 70 pounds, 60 pounds. Remember Florence Nightingale's sister or Florence Nightingale one, right? I mean, you see the picture of her. Her legs were like this big around and dying of cancer. And then three months later, you see a picture of her. She's just ready to go back to work. She was a nurse or something. But you don't see that now. You really didn't see it then. But you saw it through Brother Brown's ministry. And now we have that same authority now today, folks. He didn't take it with him. We still should not fear cancer. We still should not fear those words because you know what? That word goes into your brain. And it says, oh, 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 you know, and then you start thinking. Quit that stinking thinking. It's just a word that man put on it. It's all the devil. It's all the demon. And we need to talk to the demon, talk to the sickness, talk to the cancer, not to the person. All right, look, he's talking about letting it go. He said, that's the way it is anytime, as long as you're going to do it. In other words, as long as you project yourself, <clears throat> someone talks to you and you talk back about them. God can't fight your battle. You're fighting it yourself. Ain't that what we do? Ain't that what we do? Amen. We fight a battle that we should never be in. Give it to God. Just let loose and let him do it. Just commit it to him. Look, the greatest weapon that I know of a Christian today is a committal. You said, oh, Brother Brown said one time before the greatest weapon was faith. Well, put the two quotes together. Faith is a committal to God saying, God, you got to handle this. I can't handle it no more. It's all yours. Put your kids in his hand. But listen, if he knocks them on their backside... Don't go running over there. Don't go running. Please don't go running. And you know, like Brother Claude Weisiger told me one time, he said, don't pray for him either. Because God will honor your prayer. He said, you'll take it off of them, and God's got it on them. He said, you'll pray it off of them. He said, don't. He said, you pray for their soul. You pray for God to have his will in the matter, but not, Lord, heal my son. His, his son was going through some really bad, bad times. And he was um, a drug addict. Just got to commit it to God. Say, God save his soul. Uh, I'm really not worried about his, that's what he was saying. I'm really not worried about his life. Human part. I'm worried about his soul. If you'll save his soul, Lord. Well, he did come out of it and and he's doing a little bit better now. But, you know, people get caught in that. He uh, and Hannah was one, my daughter. She's in her late 30s. 
And she went through that time of, you say, oh, it ain't nothing to it. Yeah, it is. An addiction is an addiction. I don't care if it's what it, you can name it, whatever you want to. It's an addiction. All right. And it's something you, it's real, something you have to fight. And you have to let God help you do it because you can't do it on your own. How many of, how many of you have, been, have done something like I was, the, I was the cursor and I was the smoking, the, not smoking anything, but uh, chewing tobacco and all. That was what God had to take away from me. All right. And take that out. Same way with you. You had a demon that God had to help you because there's no way you wanted to do it before. <clears throat> because that inside man hadn't been changed yet. But once that inside man got changed, praise the Lord. Let that thing out. How many times have I been telling you that? Let it out. And we get to it. That's what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> so an army first is getting ready for battle. First thing has got to be what? Select soldiers. You're selected, elected. Listen, Delta Force. Um, Marines. Were you a Marine? See, there's a special people. Not everybody can be a Marine, right? Not everybody's going to be Delta, Delta Force because they start weeding them out. And you've got the, what, elite of the elite. Well, guess what? That's what God's doing to me and you. He's taking the elite of the elite. You say, what about my brother? Don't worry about your brother. You better worry about yourself. Some soldiers, they got to be dressed for fighting. They've got to be trained for fighting by what? By a fivefold ministry. And I believe that the greatest battle that's ever fought is now ready to go into action. We read this last Sunday. I believe that God has been selecting his soldiers. Now listen, a lot of us weren't born. When did he preach this? 1962. How many of you were not even born at that time? Showed you how old the rest of us are. That's why you've got to be dressed for fighting. They've got to be trained for fighting. And I believe that the greatest battle that's ever fought is now ready to go into action. I believe that God has been selecting his soldiers. Amen. I believe he's been dressing them, training them. And the battlefront is now set, getting ready to start. Now, we know where it's at. There had to be a place selected. All right. <clears throat> why was it selected in the mind? All right. We'll talk about it in just a minute. There's a mutual ground. Look, no man's land. Satan took the what? Brain, head. God took the heart. Because we're going to read it here in a few minutes. That out of the heart proceedeth all these things. Good or bad. You say, brother, wait, what's this got to do with, with the statue of perfect man? If we don't get this right. If we don't let that what's inside of us out, good or bad, and either get rid of it or say, look. You know, when you got a, a battle, <clears throat> the best way, you have a battle plan, you have everything set just right, you have the ground right, you have everything right, but you better have a contingency plan. You better have a backup plan, because if so-and-so is supposed to act this way and come this way with his army, and he turns around and goes up on the hill and comes around, you better figure out what you're going to do real quick. So don't you think Satan is what? What? <coughs> He's the greatest. Apart from the mighty conqueror, he's the greatest battler there is. Because God was the only one that defeated him, right? Amen? So you better be weary. There's a battlefront where they meet and test their powers, where each army tests its strength against the other army, a mutual meeting place. Now, don't miss this. When that great battle started down on earth, he's talking about one in heaven, it's one on earth. There had to be a mutual meeting place. There had to be a place selected for the battle to begin and for the battle to rage. Now, look, you don't have a battle if Satan's in your soul. Come on, look back when you were when you're not born again. There was no battle of good and evil. Oh, you were trying to be morally good, yes. But you did evil. Right? You did evil. And you liked it. It was good. Right? <clears throat> but, chief, me now born again. Me now have white dog, black dog. The battleground. Which one, chief, wins? He said, the one I feed the most. 
He wasn't talking about losing his salvation. He's talking about his walk as a Christian. Amen. And that battleground begins with the human mind. There's where the battle starts. The human mind was chosen for the place of battle. Why? Because it's a neutral spot. You say, how'd that happen? It's a neutral spot. You got here, either Satan or, 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 or God, not, not, not two. We're not two soul people. And I'm saying heart because I'm, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about your, we'll talk about it in a minute, your psyche, your person, who you are. That's your soul. Who you are is the devil when you're born. Who you are when you're born again is God. All right? <clears throat> now, then you take that, and then right here is the battleground. All right? Satan can't get to your heart, your soul, if you're born again. But he can get to your mind because you're a human being. You were born in sin, shaping in iniquity, spouse of your mother's womb a liar. You came contrary to the word of God. Amen? Even though Jesus came the word of God, he came the right way. Even though he came the right way, Satan, pow, 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 pow. If you be the son of God, took him up on the temple and said, I'll give you all this. Satan must have been pretty comfortable in a church because he was on top of the temple. He said, I'll give you all this if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus is like, don't tempt the Lord thy God. But it, where? it was a decision he had to make. Remember, Brother Brown said the battle was fought in the Garden of Eden. The battle was won in the Garden of Eden, not at Calvary. It was won at the, there at Garden of Gethsemane. When he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. If it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, what happened? That thing that was inside of him took over that human and said, nope, I got to go because they need me. I got sons and daughters of God inside of me, and they've got to get out. My attribute of Savior, I've got to go to Calvary. My attribute as healer, I've got to go to Calvary. <clears throat> because decisions are made from the mind or the head. Decisions. Every decision you make, good, bad, or indifferent, comes from your brain. Everybody with me? All right, everybody okay? Don't fall asleep on me. It is warm up here. I'm sweating a little bit. Where's Aaron when you need him? I don't know who holds the future. I know, don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. That's the main thing. He holds all future and whatever mine shall be, it's in his hand. So each day I want to live, not for myself. If I live for myself, I live a selfish life. I want to live for others and give what strength I have, not to myself and to my own pleasure, but for the benefit of others that will build the kingdom of God. Now that, see, you see where he was at. He was showing where he was at. I mean, that's brotherly kindness. He didn't care about himself. He cared about his people. Then we know we quoted this a hundred times. We're going to quote it again. You have to suffer to reign. Suffer to reign. All right? The reason for this is the character simply never was made without suffering. Like I said before, generals, those five-star generals and four-star generals, they did not get those medals by pushing a pencil at a desk a hundred miles away from the battle. No, Patton, Robert E. Lee, all the different ones, they were in the heat of the battle. And what? They made decisions to win a war or win a battle, made those decisions, and those decisions, what? Put them in a place. All right? <clears throat> There's Aaron Jr. Thank you, Abby. That's my niece, bless her. Your face is red. In case you didn't know that. A man without character can't reign because power apart from character is satanic. Listen, God can't give you power and you not be able to use it. Right? Because that's what the devil did. He gave the devil power, permitted power, and look what he did with it. He used it wrong. <clears throat> but you and I, though, power with character is fit to rule who? You. You first. Blasphemous names. Look, that's gifts of God. He's talking about speaking in tongues, different things. But these gifts of God without these virtues. So without these virtues, what was happening in the churches, without these virtues, they would just stand up. We saw it the other day. <coughs> Excuse me. We saw it the other day. There was one got up, spoke in tongues, one, one uh, um, 
interpreted, and it wasn't a minute later or less than three sentences later, somebody else jumped up and did it again. And then somebody else jumped up and did it again. All right, it was out of place. It might have been of God, but it was out of place. All right, but if they would have had these virtues working in his life, see that because it makes a stumbling block to the believer, unbeliever. It's not accepted by God. This has to be first. I believe he was pointing to that. And when you have faith, virtue, knowledge, temper, faith, God, and brother, kindness, then the Holy Ghost comes down and seals you as a unit. <clears throat> the same as he seals the church ages as a unit. The way, way he makes his bride is the way he makes his individual, made out of the same material. Like Eve was made out of Adam, a rib from the side. Here's the thing that you have to have first. You can't impersonate them. He's talking about that. You can't Im- imitate them. They've got to be what? God sent and God born. Imitation only causes confusion. All right, everybody with me. Why am I against organized religion? If what is purpose to the church, the life that was in Christ isn't reflecting in you, don't you stand still if you haven't got patience, virtue, and all these things, temperance, godliness, brotherly kindness, all these things that are required. <clears throat> so it's a requirement. We know that. Let me say it again. It was a requirement. It's a requirement for you to grow as a Christian. All right, we were talking about it all in your head. So let's read this. <clears throat> I added these scriptures in just this morning. So I want to talk about this just a little bit. Psalms 94 says, look, in the multitude, <laughs> you have been sitting here today for an hour and a half. And there is a multitude of thoughts that went through your head. Good, bad, or indifferent. Oh, no, I've been listening to every word you're saying. Okay, what day is our Christmas dinner? That's what I thought. December the 4th. I wrote it down. Confucius said the shortest pencil is greater than the longest memory. If you write it down, you'll remember it. When did you say that? No. In the multitude of my thoughts, within me, they com- thy comforts delight my soul. David. In the multitude of my thoughts, within me, thy comforts delight my soul. David was thinking about the word of God, which he had the Torah. He had the five books, the first five books of the Bible. That's all he had. He was writing part of it right here. Isaiah 55 says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. <clears throat> Remember what Brother Brown said? He said, they said, Brother Brown, how can I keep these uh, evil, dirty thoughts from happening? He said, you can't, ha- you can't keep the bird from flying over your head, but you can keep it from making a nest in your head. Did everybody understand that? Because what we did was we still have the... I'm going to say it anyway. We still have some of the same thoughts we had when we were in, in the world. Hello. Amen. Well, I'll say amen for you anyway. But what do we do? We don't entertain them. Because when, cause when, we when we were in the world, we what? Oh, yeah. Oh, that beer be good today. Yeah, yeah, I'll just get me a beer. I'll go and, I'll go and, uh, and cuss this guy out or, or run somebody off the road. You see what I mean? You might still have the same thoughts about you want to run somebody off the road. That's okay. Just don't do it. But what do you do? You yield to what's inside of you, the motivator. That's what we're going to talk about just for a minute, and then we'll close. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now, God said, for my thoughts... That's what we got to turn to, that thought. My thoughts are not your thoughts. All right, so there's, there's where it's at right here. Pull it apart. Neither are your ways my ways, <clears throat> saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. James 1 verse 6 is, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable, a double-minded. Now, double-minded means right there. 
<coughs> wavering, uncertain, doubting, and divided in interest. I think I should. I think I should not. The, two, the demon and the, and the angel sitting on your shoulder. Divided in interest. But now who wins? The one you feed. Because that conscious that comes into your conscious or into your thought, it comes into your thought and what? You either entertain it or you kick it out. One of the two, and you've done it. I mean, we're all, we're all human beings. But how many of you, though, have entertained a thought and it never even come to pass, never even come up that way, it never was done that way, never was even, never was even nowhere you thought you wasted your time thinking about all that? Oh, I'm not the only one who does that. We waste a lot of our time on negative thoughts. I'll say amen for everybody in the building. We waste our time on negative thoughts. So, Brother Branham, what do we need to do? What's the recipe? Right mental attitude. Now, the right mental attitude. He's talking about the prayer line. Now, you along here, do you understand what I mean when I say the right mental attitude? Your right mental attitude toward God's divine promise. Now, it's toward a promise, not toward anything. <coughs> will bring any promise to pass. Because, look, healing is not conditional that you're saved. Come on. Saying to this mountain, be removed. It's not conditional. It said, if you say, if you believe in your heart, lay hands on the seat, they shall recover. Now, maybe you don't believe that. You say, well, my faith is weak. I wouldn't confess that. See, don't let the devil know that. <coughs> Always say, I've got good faith. You say, no, you're lying. No, you're lying if you don't. I believe God with all my heart. See, don't testify nothing of the devil. When you accept your healing, never act like you're sick or crippled anymore. Believe that you're healed. Take him at his word. Then it's all over on God then and not on you. Wow. As long as you take God at his word, then the word will produce what it promised to do. That's what I'm talking about. You know, we're talking about healing. We're going to talk about healing. We talked about healing of our soul. That's the new birth, right? We're going to talk about healing now of our spirit realm. Remember, read his affection because that's where this is going to be. Is that right? Now have faith, believe him with all your heart. Queen of Sheba, 1961. Always remember, church, God's words are true. I believe the right mental attitude towards any divine promise of God will bring it to pass. Look, if you can look at it in the right way. But remember, he's been my standard in life. I have tried to do this. This is one I told you. If you had a situation, I read this the other day. I'm going to read it again. The first thing I want to find out whether it's the will of God or not. If you, need to, if you need something from God today, if we believe God sent a prophet, we believe we, he gave us life lessons also. Then I know it's God's will. The next thing is my objective to it and my motive in doing it. All right? And my motive is right. If it's the will of God, my objective is right, my motive is right. I have faith that it will be done. Because first it's the will of God. And I have my objective is to glorify him. And my motive is to give him all the glory. I told you the situation about the brother in another church that said he was going to go to work on Sunday and get paid double time so he could pay the pay the uh, <clears throat> send offering to the missions. He was all right in two points. But he missed the very first one. The will of God was not for him to stay out of church. Amen. So he missed it on the first one. He might have got it on the second one, second one or the third one. Sure, he had, a, he had a motive. Take the money, give it all to missions. But he stayed out of church. Look, he became spiritually a desert. Just now coming back to church. Been in church all his life. Because first it's the will of God, and I have my objective is to glorify him, and my motive is to give him all the glory. What are you saying, Brother Wade? That's right here. What is your motive and objective? It's to know more than the next church. It's to know more about God. And then let the other churches see that we're different. I'm talking about denomination churches and churches in the message. All right. <clears throat> and my objective is to glorify him. And my motive is to give him all the glory. See, so there's no selfish motive about it. If you have a selfish motive, it ain't going to work. 
Show us the Father in 1963. The word Jesus said is the seed that the sower sowed. Look, and any germatized seed in the right kind of soil will produce its kind. <clears throat> now, look, he's talking about being taped, and it's going to be thousands are going to listen to it. He just was prophesying. I go on record, I say this about the word of God being a seed. If you can take the right mental attitude toward any divine promise of God, he will bring it to pass. <clears throat> look, if you can get yourself in position to believe that that promise was for you. So you got, it's a condition. You got to believe that that promise is for you. All right. And God's going to equip us for the battle. Just a few things. We know that. So we see that it's a requirement. All these things. Brother Donnie had to have shells and gun and, and canteen and whatever else he needed. That's what everybody, that's what God, the United States, gave him what? To go to battle with. Ah, oh, Brother Donnie, you going out there in your skivvies and your, and your T-shirt. We'll bring, you, we'll, bring, we'll bring it to you when you need it. <clears throat> no. You got ready before the battle started. Because you knew the battle was impending. You knew when the battle was going to be almost, and you knew to get ready for it. Well, same way with me and you. We know the battle. We know it's here. We know it's to us an everyday thing. Show God's requirement how we can come to the perfect stature of a perfect man before God. Now, we were talking about add. That word add is not like two plus two is four. All right? So what does it mean in the Greek lexicon? It means to minister. Minister nourishment. So add minister to your faith virtue. You got to get it from a minister. Minister unto to supply, furnish, and present. Add to be supplied, ministered unto, and assisted. And as we said before, this is a really good quote from the um, a minister from the Internet. It wasn't a message preacher. But I like the quote. A person of virtue makes the progression from knowing what is right to doing what is right. Amen? But look, he or she intentionally chooses what to say, do, and value. You can either shut it off today and just, just be born again, and you can sit there and, and people will just run right past you. Or you can say, God, it's all for me. Fill my cup, Lord. Raise it up like Sister Barbara. Some of y'all's cup never will get full. Pour it on me, Lord. Well, it's just going to run off that side. But if you raise them hands up, guess what? You made a cup. And your head is in the middle of it. Drown me in you, Lord, because if you drown me in you, I'm okay. <coughs> Amen? He or she intentionally chooses what to say, do, and value, reaching beyond the good toward the best. What Brother Brown say? He's getting the best soldiers ready. All right? In every situation, a virtuous person knows what they have an opportunity, that they have an opportunity to honor the Lord and reflect him to others. And that's what it is, right? Living for others. And, and virtue, now not the virtue at the bottom, but these are all called virtues. These are the virtues of God. So virtues mean moral excellence, value, merit, meritousness, and worth. Active quality or power. What? Power without what? Character. It's satanic. <clears throat> Capacity or power adequate to the production of a given effect. You got to come to the statue of perfect man before that headstone is going to come down on top. It can't come down on the base. It's got to come down on what? Somebody that's mature. Mature bride. Energy, strength, potency, efficacy as the virtue of a medicine. Specifically, this is it, moral excellence. Integrity of character, purity of soul, performance of duty. All right, let's talk about this just for a minute, and then we'll, then we'll dismiss it this afternoon. Because remember, your heart or your soul is the same thing. Everybody with me on that? All right, heart and soul, same, same word in Bible and in our terms. But now remember, there's only faith or doubt in that soul. All right, let's back it down into the soul. So right, let's read this right here. <clears throat> Matthew 15, verse 17, just for a second. Do not ye yet understand that whosoever entereth in at the mouth, goeth whatever enter into the mouth, and goes out the belly and cast out in the draught? They were talking to him about eating stuff and all that. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. 
For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murder, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. Wow. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. All right. Romans 6, verse 16 said, Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servant to obey his servants you are to whom you obey. What are you talking about? The inner man. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Listen, you were changed by a doctrine. <clears throat> I don't care if you were born again. You were born again by a doctrine. You want me to prove it? Brother Brown said Jesus' first doctrine was you must be born again. First doctrine. You must be born again. Let's get that doctrine right. I believe we're to the place we can get that doctrine right. That you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, being then made free from sin. Thank God. You become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Now, he's not discluding the flesh. You got it. It's here today. Most of you with your eyes closed. I hope you're praying for me. Look, for you ha as you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, this direction, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness and holiness. And I want to read the definition, and then we'll stand and the musicians can come. The word, Greek word is cardia. Where do you think we get cardiology? Everybody with me? Cardia. Cardiology. What? Of the heart. But look, here's the definition. I want you to read this or read it with me. Denotes the center of all physical and spiritual life. So we know there's a physical heart, but there's also the heart of an apple. Right? So there's, you can say heart different ways. But now watch this. It separates it. The center and seat of spiritual life, the soul or mind, as it is the fountain, fountain. What's a fountain? A fountain has to have an original place where water begins. Then it comes up and it goes out, right? So there's an origination of a fountain. There's a place where it starts. It doesn't just start out in the air and start spurting water. No, it's got a place down here that it starts from. What? Your soul. It is the fountain and seat of the thoughts, passions, desires. Now, the seat is not where you do it. But it's where it begins. Everybody with me? Thoughts, passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, endeavors of the understanding, the faculty and seed of the intelligence. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not up here. Down here. Of the soul, so far as it is affected and stirred in a bad way or a good way. Or of the soul as the seat of the sensibilities, affections, emotions, desires, appetites, and passions. Or the middle or center or innermost part of anything, even though inanimate, which is the core of an apple or the heart of an apple or the heart of a pear or the heart of a peach. Everybody with me? All right. Let's read what Jesus said about this. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of... Of your fountain, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth what? Evil things. So I wrote myself a note. It affects your senses, which is what? Memory, reason, conscious, affection, imagination. You've got one sense in the soul, an originator, a fountain, somewhere where these things start, where your thoughts begin... Your thoughts don't begin up here. It begins in your who you are. Amen. All right? Then it goes up to what? Fountain of memory, reason, conscious, imagination, affection. It all just spurts out from that middle. That's why the inside guy has to be changed. Listen. 
your source of water had to be changed. Didn't that Jesus said, said, how can bitter water come out of a good well? How can good water come out of a bitter well? What are you talking about? The well of you. Let's stand to our feet. The well of you. Out of the heart will precede these virtues. But you've got to let them go through what? The filter of your mind. That's what we're going to talk about. The filter of your mind. In your memory, your reason, your conscious effects and imagination. But remember, as God is pushing up this way, even if you're born again, as God is pushing up this way with water, so is Satan taking something else and coming this way with it. And where do they meet? They meet right there. Memory, reasoning, conscious, imagination, and affection. That's where it meets, and that's where the battleground is, and we'll talk about. Let me read this right here. I'm going to read it back this afternoon. Now, listen. Brother Brown's talking about dying naturally. But didn't we have to die spiritually first? So let's read this as dying spiritually. Now, the only thing you do when you die, you just change those five senses. Glory. You just receive another sense. Think about being born again. And you're alive with a higher sense. Now, he's talking about somebody dying, going into the sixth dimension, and your senses are expanded. Let's talk about being born again here. I want my senses expanded here, not over there. I want to grow in grace and knowledge here. I don't have to. I won't be growing over there. And you're alive with a higher sense, thousands of times higher than this in another life. A life where there's no death, no sorrow. The things that you don't know nothing about now, you see it plainly when you cross there. Didn't you see, don't you see things plainly now? You don't have to see over there in the sixth dimension. You see them now. We see them plainly by what? By the word of God. And I'll read the rest of it later on. But there's your, it affects your senses. And the fountain you start with. Whatever your water is, bitter, it's going to what? Produce bitter memory, bitter reasoning, bitter consciousness, bitter imagination, and bitter affection. You're just going to be the bitterest person in the world because you're bitter at everything. You're bitter at everybody. You don't have no joy. You don't have no peace. You know why? Because you clogged your flues up. So that fountain down inside of you is joy, peace, long-suffering, all those different things. And it's wanting to push itself out. But what? <clears throat> we have a filter in the greatest battle. Remember, Brother Brown preached a thinking man's filter. A thinking man's filter. I want my memory to be toward good. I want my reasoning. The Bible does say, and we'll talk about it later, come and let us reason together. All right? My conscience, we need to have a clear conscience, right? And what, we still have a clear conscience. If you get to brotherly kindness and you don't have a clear conscience, you're not going to get brotherly kindness. I believe Brother Branham had a clear conscience to man because he never had anything to say bad about anybody. If he did, he's already forgiven all that. I'm talking about right at the end. He said, I have no bitterness, no guile, no bitterness toward anybody. I'm not going to talk about these people anymore. I'm not going to call these people Rickettas and Rickies. Lord, you've condemned me for that. I'm not going to call them that anymore. Ma'am? He came to a place that he had his memory, reasoning, conscience, <clears throat> his imagination and affection was all turned toward God. More than to me than anybody on the face of the earth outside of Jesus Christ at that time. All right. But why did he preach it to me and you? So that he could tell it by himself? No. Remember, he was not selfish. He gave this so that we could have it. And then God helped him open the seals. So that we can see where this is coming from. We can see what fountain, what, what memory is supposed to do. We can see that we, had a, we have a soul, then we have a spirit, and then we have a body. We're a triune being. And he knew these senses were going to be affected by what's deep down inside of us. That's why I said before, folks, you're going to produce whatever water you got inside of you is going to burst forth whether you want it to or not. Good or bad. Bitter you seen people that's just bitter? Why be bitter? Why be bitter? So, well, somebody did something to me. 
Jesus, how many times do we forgive them people that cut me off the road on the road? <clears throat> Seventy times? He said, <laughs> nope. Seventy times seven, and then more if you need it. I said, mm, that's 490 times. We've never got to that spot, have we? That's what I thought. We're heading there, though. Where you get to where you look at a prophet of God, he was a prophet. He knew those people didn't like him. He knew those people were going to talk about him. He actually probably was projected into their living room one day, and they didn't know nothing about it. And God let him hear what was going on. Because remember what he said. He said, those ministers are going to challenge you on water baptism, right? so and so's going to be sitting here. You're not going to have the place. so and so's going to be sitting here. This one's going to be sitting here. And you won't be able to get the, to get the hall. And when he told that brother, the brother said, Brother Brown, we already paid for it. Well, guess what? It happened exactly the way Brother Brown said it happened. And he knew them 300 preachers. But with compassion, he preached that sermon, not bitter to nobody. He could have called them vipers. He could have called them snakes in the grass. And knew that it was the truth. But yet he said, them 300 ministers are going to come down and get baptized. He knew they wasn't going to, but he gave them a chance. He gave them an opportunity to turn that thing around. But he knew that's the, way, the same thing with God. God knew the children of Israel was going to hate him. He knew they were not going to go to the promised land. Yet he treated them just like his children. He gave them everything they needed to get there. That's why one day they can't say, you didn't. You didn't give me the right provisions. We can't say you didn't give me the right provision. We have to say, oh, God, this is where I missed it at. This is where I failed, and this is where I failed. Amen? Let's sing a song. God bless you. Oh, I'm a pilgrim and a stranger Wandering through this world of sin If you have a need. Won't hurt a bit when the saints <coughs> go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Sing it to him as you're dismissed.